Okay, so I guess before I start telling you how God brought me to a place of surrender, it would be helpful to start by telling you kind of who I've always been. And um, I must have been born with it because I can't ever remember a time when I haven't um, had a deep desire to please people. Um, I'm a people pleaser. And um, I grew up in a family of very successful people. Gosh darn it. Um, (laughs) um, My parents are both very successful teachers and coaches, and um, I had an older sister who was good at everything. I'm not kidding you. She was good at everything. (laughs) And I'm so blessed to have been her sister um, because she taught me how to work hard and what that does for you. But um, the expectations Um, whether they were explicitly stated, just always felt very high. Um, And that paired with, like, my innate um, desire to please people, it oftentimes set up a dangerous, I guess, set of of circumstances where um, it was easy to just not feel good enough. And, like, to stand up here and say that, I, I feel embarrassed saying that because I was part of a family who like it was awesome and supportive and loving and I never once went without anything that I needed and a lot of times I didn't have to go without things that I wanted either um, but that like that evil still existed and for my whole life um, I've just I've always struggled with feeling like a little bit of a failure and like just not like like I I'm not measuring up to whatever expectations. A lot of times the expectations were ones that I put on myself that were a little bit unrealistic. But that's something that's that I've always struggled with, and um, I hate to say it. And again, I feel like it's almost a little embarrassing to say. It, but I mean, there are times in my life, longer spans of time, where I, I could almost use the word that I've just like I've really hated myself. And um, in middle school and in high school. I mean, everyone hated themselves in middle school, let's be real. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) but, um, it was a little bit deeper than that, I think. Um, and so this, yeah, there's just always been that nagging sense of, like, uh, disappointment in myself, I guess. Um, and so switching gears a little bit, I grew, I've always grown up in the church, um, yeah, I've been going to church since I can remember, and we started going to Fresno Presbyterian Church when we moved here, um, and then we went to Countryside Chapel in Baltic for a while, and then I started coming here either my sophomore or my junior year, but um, then Thomas Ellis invited me to come to youth group with Ben my junior year, and up until that point in my life, I feel like at that time, my junior year, when I started coming here, I was probably like at an all-time low with those, like, just, like, with those feelings of not liking myself and stuff, and, um, and so I started coming here, and, um, just as I made my way through that year and into my senior year in high school, um, and continuing to come here and just living out the days of my life, (laughs) um, I just got, I started to feel this sense of just, like, something wasn't right. Because I knew that I wasn't supposed to feel like that, um, especially coming to church, um, and I knew that the like the way I saw faith, there just wasn't something there. There wasn't something right about it. Like because I would hear people talking about loving God and like having a relationship with Him, and the only thing that I knew was like I hated to read my Bible, and I would pray and I would fall asleep like no matter how hard I tried and like I I believed in God like I can't remember ever not believing in God and not believing in what Jesus did for me and everything like I've always called myself a Christian but I just felt like like I, I would feel so guilty because these people would be talking about this relationship and I just I like I was struggling to even do the things you know that Christians did I, like I yeah I was just struggling um and so Fast forward, I guess. I then I started going to Malone. My I entered there my freshman year, and um, I my idea of faith was kind of like the way that I saw the rest of my life. I guess like you you work hard and you do these things, and then you get to have a relationship with Jesus, or then you're saved. I guess, um, 
and I know that I, I had heard before that that wasn't the way it was, but like that's just, that's the way I saw life, and I feel like that's how I saw my faith as well. Um, and so, yeah, so then I got to Malone, and I was coming off of that, those feelings of something just not being right, and, and by God's grace, I know this now, I didn't realize it then, but um, he put some people in my life that um, would then help me, like, change my life um, but my friend Linda was one of them and freshman year she was my team chaplain on my basketball team and then my coach like stopped setting up meetings or whatever but um, I just had this I wanted to keep meeting with her because I don't know there's just something about her and I knew that she could answer my questions because I had so many questions and um, and so she willingly met with me like she invited me over to her house and she would just listen to me talk, and she would answer my questions, and she even taught me how to pray out loud, so <laughs> that was fun, because um, I was real, like, I couldn't pray out loud. I was, like, super embarrassed, but then we got, we got there, um, but so, yeah, so those first few years of college, I was just struggling. I remember, like, countless times when we would sit down together. Um, I would just be like, I can't, like, I can't feel God. Like, I'm reading my Bible, and I'm praying and I'm doing these things like I'm going to chapel and I'm singing and I'm listening to Christian music and I just like I can't feel God and I was so frustrated because again like you would hear all these people talking about this relationship and I was just so frustrated because I was like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and I can't feel God and um and I guess it's important to say like all of the while like I I play basketball at Malone and I'm a student obviously and um and and I was working really hard in those things. Like before I said, I was a people pleaser. And like, so it's always driven me to want to do well, like in school and in basketball and stuff. And so that was going on this whole while while I was struggling with these questions of faith. Um, and so despite my frustration, like I can't remember how many times I had that conversation with Linda. Um, just about being frustrated and not being able to feel God. And I remember, and at the time I didn't realize it, but later on, it would come out, like, how important this question. But she asked me, she was like, are you giving God time? Like, are you, are, are you listening for God? And, like, I was like, heck yes. Like, I'm taking 20 minutes, and I'm trying to sit and be quiet. But, like, and I was like, yes, I'm giving God time. Like, I'm reading my Bible, and I'm doing all these things. I was like, yes, I'm giving God time. And I wouldn't realize until later that that wasn't really the point of the question. And that's not really the answer to the question. But um, so despite those frustrations, I got to my junior year and my faith had grown. I'd learned so much more about God and about faith and being a Christian than, than I knew before. Um, and I had grown to, like, I had grown in my faith and um, I felt stronger and I did feel closer to um, God even though I was frustrated. But um, then I, I remember this day very clearly I don't know what prompted me or like focused my mind on like the on humility um, or being humble. I don't. I wish I could remember what it was that I was reading or watching, but I can't. But I do remember the day very distinctly because I prayed this prayer about being humble. And I'm. I don't think at the time that I really knew what I was praying because if I do, I don't think I would have prayed it. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, I mean, I feel like that was probably the Holy, Holy Spirit. I mean, I know it was prompting me to pray that. But I just remember sitting down. It was like a really nice day during the first week of school. And I sat down by my desk and like the sun was sh shining in and it was just all good. And I prayed and I was, and I just asked God to humble me. I was like, God, please humble me so you can work in me. Like kind of get me out of the way so you can work in me. And that became my prayer for like the weeks to come. Um, I was like really devoted to that prayer for some reason. But, and at that time, like things were going pretty well. Um, like I, like I was a student and I was getting pretty good grades and I was excited about my classes and everything and, and in basketball, I came off kind of a shaky year my season, my sophomore year and I was doing much better and I was confident about like heading into the season and everything and, um, and that, and I was dating this boy and he was pretty cute and I liked him and things were going well. Um, and so things were just going pretty well for me. And then as um, 
the days got shorter and the temperature got colder <laughs> and fall came, um, the tides started to turn a little bit and um, things started to not go so well anymore. Uh, like, so I was taking this theology course at Malone and this world politics course and they were so reading heavy and like I don't know how to skim. Like that was a skill that I was not blessed with. I cannot skim. Like I have to read every word or I don't get it. And, and so I'd be staying up till like two o'clock in the morning trying to get these things done. And I was getting good grades in the class, but like I just, I felt like I wasn't doing a good enough job. Um, and so I just felt like, a, like I felt like I was failing, even though that's stupid because I wasn't failing the classes, but I just, that's how I felt because I wasn't doing it to the best of my ability. And so that was hard. And, and then in basketball, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> it was like someone flipped a switch on my back and like just got rid of every amount of like skill that I have ever worked to achieve. And like I was trying so hard, but it was like every time I caught the ball, it was like I froze because I was so scared of messing up. And then all that led me to do was mess up. And, and like I grew up in a basketball family and, um, and it was so like, my parents would come and watch me play and I'd sit on the end of the bench and I would just like try to hold it together and not cry because I just felt like such a disappointment like to myself and to my parents and to my coach like who I just wanted to be proud of me I just felt like such a failure and and then um, I was dating that boy and um, Dustin and I had a lot of differences but like I liked him a lot and so I wanted to make up for those things and um, and so I was like trying to be more social. Like I am not a social butterfly and he was. And so I tried to like be more social and I tried to just do all these things to try to make it work. And I was trying so hard. And then um, I got the good old, uh, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore um, speech. And he broke up with me and um, and that was kind of, like, that was the last thing that came, and it was kind of just like this, the bra, the, the bra, the straw <laughs> that broke the camel's back. <laughs> the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, and, yeah, that was just kind of it. And I just, I cried a lot. There was this span of two weeks where I just, I did a lot of crying, and um, I just, like, I was just over come by the sense of failure like I had I was giving I was spending so much time working at school and at basketball and and working on this relationship and like I was failing miserably in every one of those things um and I like I just I couldn't I was like I was so disappointed and so I just felt like such a failure and um and at the same time though I had this group of people surrounding me, like Linda and my teammates and my family, um, who just kind of like wrapped me up in like the biggest hug. And I felt so loved. Despite like I feeling like such a failure, I felt so loved, like more loved than I have ever felt during that time. Um, and I knew, I felt loved by those people, but I also just felt so loved by God. Like, by the grace of God, I was still able, like, I was, I prayed so much during that time. Um, and, like, I just, I felt God's presence and I felt his love for the first time. And I, that sounds weird, but, like, I never felt it before. And I realized then what Linda was talking about whenever she asked me, are you giving God time? Like, are you, are you listening for God? And I had spent, I didn't love God more than I loved basketball or more than I loved my relationship, or more than I loved school. I was serving those, those gods in my life. I had made them idols, and success in those things, those were my idols. I loved God, but it was like, I can, I can control these things, like I can work towards these things, like I can see the success in these things. And that was so important to me, because I wanted to feel like I was doing a good job, and I was just serving those things, and then and I was seeking God, but not before those things. Like, I felt like I was. I was like, yes, I'm giving God time, but I was serving those gods um, and not God. I didn't love him most. And then during those two weeks, like, my heart was broken in, like, the, 
a way that really stunk, but then in the most beautiful way because it, I just realized how broken I was and how much I let God down. But at the same time, like, He was waiting there for me. Like, He had brought me to that place. He humbled me like I, like I prayed. That was one prayer that He did here. And he did, I did feel Him or hear Him speaking to me about that one loud and clear. But He humbled me and He brought me to my knees and showed me all of my brokenness, like, laid flat out. Like, it, there was no no blurry vision like I saw it all I was a failure at these things that I was trying to control and I I was I did not love God the most and I was broken and I realized it and it was so such a heavy burden but at the same time I felt so loved and there was this God there waiting for me waiting for me to come back to him that's what he was like Sarah you haven't been waiting on me I've been waiting on you um kind of a thing and and I just was overwhelmed with a sense of love. And like, it was that that drove me to surrender. Um, I remember the day, I'm, I know I have to, I only was supposed to have 10 minutes. I feel like I've gone over. <laughs> but um, I remember the day, it was after my world polit politics class. Um, before the class, I had like spent like 10 minutes on my futon just crying. It was just a bad day. And and I prayed, I prayed that God would give me strength. Like I just kept praying because I didn't know what else to pray. And I went to class because I had to go. And then I walked back to my room and I just, I felt this peace. And I came back in my room and my roommate was gone. And I just sat there on the floor and I just started crying. But this time they were tears of joy because I just felt so loved. And I just asked God to take it. Like I didn't want to hold it anymore because I made a mess of it whenever I did sorry um and that was the day that changed my life because since then like oh I wish I could tell you I wish I could I wish you all knew me better um and could see I mean maybe it's not visible but I feel like it is like I just feel like God has changed me uh, I just feel like my capacity to love people is so much greater like I I love everybody <laughs> And I didn't used to. Like, I used to be kind of mean. And um, and I just, like, I never liked to leave home. And, like, now I just want to go. Like, I just want to go wherever God wants me to go. And, and that just, that, that's not me. And so, like, I can't tell you enough or, like, tell you strong enough, like, how awesome it felt to do that. And then, like, to see God be faithful to because he has and like I wish that I wouldn't have strove for so long <laughs> because it was exhausting it was exhausting and I still struggle to hold I still struggle with so many things struggle not to surrender <laughs> but at least now I know that like that God is there with me and he's gonna bring me out of those things like I know that I know that I'm still gonna struggle and it's okay, so I know I'm over, so I'm going to be done. <laughs> I'm sorry, people down there with junior church and nursery. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm done. And no, I'm not disappointed in you, just in case that question is coming up in her mind. Isn't she a delightful girl? Um, and that's what it takes, isn't it? For God to break us down and bring us to that place. Uh, I, I, was, I was jumping up and down excited about her testimony today and about the great privilege for us to baptize her. I get the privilege of actually doing it, but it's us. And I'm, I'm blessed by that. Um, there are some here today who no doubt need to be brought by the Spirit to that place that Mary and Sarah was brought. And God is working and, and you're recognizing His work. You're here this morning, you heard that. And you're recognizing His work in your life. And you need to be brought to that place where Sarah was brought. Not to perfection, but to surrender and dependence. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. 
there's spiritual warfare all around us and even in us. And so Russell Moore says that at Christmas time we need to cry out, as Sarah did, cry out with gratitude to a God who fought our enemy for us in a surprising and unexpected and upside down kind of way in that he sent his son. And say, all I want for Christmas is a crushed snake skull. And you do that by gladly becoming the blond slave of this God-man who was born to us and who grew up and died for us so that you might win through redemption. Sinners and saints alike, that's the gospel. Bow with me in prayer. Father, thank you for Sarah's testimony. Thank you that that testimony was given in just a few moments, but it took all of her life for her to live it so that she could tell it. So grateful to you for your work in her heart. And Thank you for the grace of Jesus Christ that came on Christmas so that she could do in time what Mary did in her time, give herself up as a bond slave of the Lord Jesus Christ through surrender and dependence upon him. As I pray for us this morning, I recognize that there's someone here that just may want to actually need to stand just to stand with Sarah that God is doing a work in my life and I'm, I'm here I'm finally here to that place of recognizing I need to finally give it all up to God and so in a spirit of prayer with every head bowed um, if you need to stand as a sign and a seal of your surrender today. Would you do that right now while we're bowed together in prayer? Just stand up. Father, thank you for those who stood. I'm so proud of them. And I know you are so pleased. Thank you for your marvelous grace in each of their lives. Thank you, Father, for challenging us this morning. I pray for them. I pray for me. I pray for all of us that we'll just give it all up. That we'll stop trying to please um, others and just give ourselves over to you and know the joy and wonder of what surrender and humility and dependence feels like and looks like. Behold, the bond slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ, let it be done to us according to your will, Heavenly Father. And you may be seated. Thank you. And God bless you. Amen. I just want you to know in the presence of God and in the presence of these people. That as your pastor and friend, I couldn't be more proud of you than I am now. She came to my office two weeks ago and said, I don't want you to be disappointed with me. I'm struggling. And afterward I said, I'm more proud of you than I was before you came in. Because of her honesty and desire to give herself up to God. And Sarah, I think you're Mary like and I love that about you. And before, you didn't feel like you're pleasing to anybody, but now you're pleasing to God. That means you're pleasing the right people in your life, okay? And it is my great privilege. Because of your testimony and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your desire to to continue to walk as a disciple of Christ. It is my great privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.